Okay. Let me share the content uh, for today. <clears throat> All right, uh, can you see the slides? Okay, good. So yesterday, uh, I've posted a, a 30 minute video about uh, some slides on, on this topic. So covering from a chemically amplified photoresist until uh, hold on yep until a modulation transfer function so uh do you actually watch the video on elen or do you watch the video we're gonna discuss today okay <clears throat> okay, let's go uh, to few part. So, all right. So on this page, uh <coughs> The content covers <clears throat> chemically amplified photosynthesis that we normally use in a DUV system uh, for 248 or 193 illumination uh, source, but lasers. So, what is actually happening with the resist? Uh, see on this slide that uh, upon exposure to the illumination source, we're going to have a catalyst uh, effect <coughs> within the resist that we used to, <clears throat> we need to, uh, what we call, uh, leverage on in order to uh, increase the sensitivity of the photoresist uh, for the whole process. So, Photo acid is, is created in the resist upon exposure to the DV light due to this uh, catalysis effect. And the effect is further enhanced in uh, PEB. So that's why we need uh, PEB badly uh, post exposure bait in order to uh, amplify the, the catalytic reaction that has been induced earlier on in the exposure process. So this is what's happening in the, in the DUV resist. Uh, if we <clears throat> exposed uh, to to the scanner <clears throat> under the UV light. So let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, about this a recap, and then we're going to go to the uh, contrast curve. Then we so it summarizes what's actually happening in the negative and positive photoresis. So you can see the polymer content in both negative and positive. And then the main thing here is the photo reaction that we like to emphasize, where <clears throat> last time uh, when we talk about uh, negative resist, we talk about the, hard, the exposed part will be hardened. So the real reason for that is due to polymerization of the resist upon exposure so that's basically described the photo reaction in the resist and on the other hand 
uh, we have photosolubilization, which is the opposite effect in positive resist, uh, where the exposed regions will be soluble in the developer later on. Okay. So now let's look at the contrast curve. So contrast again, let me just recap before we go to the curve. Is the ability of the resist to distinguish or differentiate various levels of light intensities. <clears throat> um, so uh, when I say light intensities in this case, it's actually referring to the to the dosage that we're going to use for the exposure process. Hold on. It's not coming. Uh, okay. Dose, okay. Dose in uh, millijoule per cm squared. We call dose as well. All right. Uh, experimentally determined by exposing the resist to different amount of light or different amount of dosage or during the scanner process. And then uh, for the fixed time, then we, we measure the thickness of the resist after the uh, development process. So uh, this actually describes <clears throat> what do we need to do in order to come to the contrast curve. Okay. So we're going to see on, on the next page the contrast curve where we uh, plot the resist remaining in terms of the thickness uh, against uh, dosage of scanner exposure. So what we do is we actually spin uh, photoresist on the wafer. So assuming this is resist. So say your thickness is 100 nano. Okay. Uh, the thickness that you have uh, spin coated. And then you expose uh, the sample to... So you're going to have like a couple of samples. One, ex one exposed to uh, different levels of dosage during the exposure. So this one happening, this one is happening in the coating process. <clears throat> and then when you go to exposure process, you expose this particular sample to a uh, different level of dosage in millijoule per cm squared. Then you, then you move on to development process. So you develop the, the exposed areas. So you remove the exposed areas if you're talking about positive resist. And if you're talking about negative resist, it's going to be the, the opposite one, right? And then after the CED process, what you need to do is you need to measure the original, uh, no, the remaining thickness of the photoresist if there is still any, okay? So this is how you do the contrast curve experimentally. So let's look at the contrast curve on what do we get. <clears throat> Right, so you can see on the y-axis uh, the fraction of resist remaining. Uh, one, one being the, the most one or the maximum one. So, and it reflects the original thickness as you spin coated on the resist uh, during the coating process. Okay, so, and, and uh, the x-axis shows the increased exposure dose in the scanner. And then you can see the plot of uh, a resist remaining. Okay, so can someone please explain to me what you understand by this contrast curve? <clears throat> Anyone? F and everything on the curve for both resists. Anyone? <clears throat> I mean, what do you understand by the contrast curve? Can I mute yourself? <clears throat> Oops. Q0 reaction starts to happen, okay. So by the reaction starts to happen, what do you actually mean? 
So let's talk about positive resist now. So apa jadi sekarang kat Q0 tu? And what happens next? Anyone else? Sementara Amirah nak type. <coughs> Hazika? What do you understand about contrast curve? Can I unmute yourself? Uh, yes, Doctor. Yep, go ahead. Uh, from contrast curve, uh, what I understand is um. The Q no is uh, when the reaction uh, is start when is uh, the exposed area begin to become uh, soluble for positive uh, resist. Okay, so Q not right? Ah uh, yes, Q not. So you want to continue on on uh, the increase uh, dose? Ah, uh, <clears throat> so uh, when the when the increasing node are uh, those, the fraction are uh, increased, are uh, also increased. But fraction of? Of the, of the photoresis that are uh, exposed to the, okay. to the, to the light. Okay, so as a result, when you develop, what do you get? As <laughs> develop, what I get. Uh, after, okay, say if, just now we were talking about Q0. So, so if you now refer to, for example, 10 millijoule per cm squared. Yes. Millijoule in comparison to Q0. Q0 and energy equals to Q0, or maybe, I don't know, about 7 millijoule per cm squared. So what is the difference between those two? Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Izian. Uh, <clears throat> Izian, what's happening at 10 millijoule in comparison to Q0? Izian? Inas, Inas, what do you think? <coughs> what what's happening at ten? <coughs> Experimentally done just now. I say explain though. Faika. What do you think? Yes. Um, yep. I think yep, go ahead. Uh -huh. when we when we have dose of ten, I think zero point okay. five of the resist become soluble. Zero point okay, 0 .5. ten millijoule. Okay, zero point five of the resist become. Yes. Okay, and uh, what's happening to another zero point five? Um. Still, um, what? It's still hard. Okay, so that yeah. means when you do the development process, uh, some of the resists from the exposed areas will not be gone. Yes. Okay. So it will be like completely soluble when we got dose over 100. Or yeah, QM. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, Shah said 60% reaction or react from complete reaction okay yep we are close to 50 60 so let me draw here for you to understand more okay Okay, can you see my whiteboard now? Yeah, 
Nampak tak whiteboard dia? Can you see my whiteboard? Okay, good. So, um, <clears throat> this is your silicon, for example. Resist, photoresist, assume 100 nano. Uh, that has been spin coated during the coating process. Then uh, you expose, uh, then you go to exposure, right? So assuming you go to exposure, so you have wavelength of, for example, if you expose in the UV system, so you're going to expose the resist to 248 nano. So assuming you have a reticle up there, your mouse is here. For example, so you're exposing this region. So then this will be exposed. This will be exposed. Okay, tadi kita tengok contrast curve. Let me redraw. The... Let's, wait. Let's say this one is fraction of uh, resist remaining so this one is one this one is zero so assuming uh it it has a sh this this one is 100 millijoule maybe let's see square and this one is q naught so okay so this one there's not qf right qf so this one maybe I don't know, just put Q X maybe. So um at Q naught, at Q naught, kalau you expose guna uh, exposure energy of uh, Q naught a millijoule. For example, katalah fifty millijoule lah. Example lah, fifty millijoule per cm square, half of the QF value. So at Q naught. Uh, there is no action in the release yet. The reaction just about to start. Tapi there is no photosolubilization yet. Okay, about. So photosolubilization is not happening yet. Or just about to happen. Photosolubilization. Positive result. So, tak ada apa-apa yang jadi lagi. So, if you use 50 millijoule per cm square, you go for, uh, you've gone to coating, then you go to exposure, then you develop using uh, timah, then <coughs> lepas you measure experimentally, as I, as I said just now, you measure your resist remaining. You measure thickness here, that's it. To be able to plot this curve. So, below you measure the thickness, at that point, at 50 millijoule, the thickness remaining after the CED process is exactly the initial thickness, okay? So at this point, the thickness there is exactly the same as your initial thickness. So there's no change, right? So for the second case, if you go for QX, for example, if you're talking about, I don't know, maybe, for example, 75 millijoule, assuming it's in the center. So what's happening is, uh, reaction is already happening within the resist, but the exposure dose is not enough to cause the resist to be completely removed after the CED process. So what you might end up after the after the CED process could be something like this. So you have silicon here. So, okay, you have your unexposed area here unexposed area so this this bit this bit okay supposed to be like this supposed to be like this if it's completely exposed but it's not because of the lack of exposure dose right so what you could get oops sorry okay what number kan tadi saya tersilap tekan nampak apa eh please confirm nanti saya draw you tak nampak lah Okay, good. Right? So, silicon is here. And then, what you could end up is, so, for this particular case, 75 millijoule, look at your fraction of resist remaining. It's somewhere about, uh, for example, 
if you say it's about 0.5 maybe. So macam tadi you said that uh, about 50% of the resist is removed and another 50% is not removed because it's not uh, completely soluble. So you might be getting something like this. Okay, so kalau original thickness is tadi 100 nano, so if you measure this thickness, so it could show up as 50 nano. So that's what it means. Right? So, uh, go further up to 100 millijoule per cm squared. 100 millijoule per cm squared. So, what we're going to get is this remaining will be zero. Apa maksudnya? Then, at 100 millijoule, if you if you cut 100 nanometer, then you're exposed to 100 millijoule per cm squared, then you go for development process, CED. Then you measure the thickness uh, remaining, th uh, resist remaining after the CED process. So you will end up with in area. So all the resist are now removed. So if you measure thickness of the resist here, you will you'll get zero nanometer. Or barely any resist left on the on the wafer after the C. So that's what it means by this contrast curve. Okay, this QF, 100 millijoule in this case, is also called, ni memang kita pakai dalam fab eh, dose to clear. Kalau you join Lito punya department, kalau you buat development of new resist, dulu I used to do this last time, when I, bila resist uh, baru masuk, and I can evaluate from new supplier or new composition or new whatever. So I'll need to do this uh, development with along with process engineers to see what's the minimum uh, dose required in order to clean up all the resists. So in other words, it's also called dose to clear. Dose to clear means minimum dose required in order to completely re remove the resist in the exposed region for positive resist. Uh, after the CED process. So that's what it means by dose to clear. Okay, um, easy to explain now. Boleh, huh? um, right, good. So let's go back. Slides, so you not, you not can see the slides. <laughs> Okay, good. So the same goes to the negative resist as well. If you go, go from uh, left to right, yang membezakan left and right is only uh, the mechanism within the resist. If on the left hand side for the positive resist, we are talking about photosolubilization. Okay, photosolubilization. Go back to this. <clears throat> We're talking about photosolubilization on the uh, positive resist. And on the negative resist, we are talking about the opposite mechanism, photo uh, or polymerization process. Upon, well, you can say photopolymerization as well, if, if you like, because it's induced by exposure to light. So it's photo somehow. Okay. So this one is sol solubilization. This one is polymerization. They polymerize, they cross link, so that it's harder to uh, remove. So the, the mechanism is exactly the same, but in complete opposite uh, way, right? So you need Q0 in order to start the reaction, you know, in order to start the reaction, in order to start the polymerization within the resist upon exposure. So for example, if, if this one could be like two millijoule maybe, per cm squared, right? And uh, then this one could be your QX, for example, if you wanna explain partial, a polymerization of the of the photoresist. Uh, by the way, the x axis is on the log scale, so it's not linear. So your central point could not be uh, could not be fifty millijoule, just like what I drew just now. So it's it's much lesser than that because it's on the log scale. So your QX could be somewhere ten millijoule or twelve millijoule. I, I don't know, but about, about twenty millijoule. So you might explain that as well. And then your QF is the point where you completely poly polymerize the resist. 
So if you talk about a negative resist, then if you if you go for the QF, then what it essentially means is Okay. So you spin code, um, you spin code 100 nanometer in the coating process, and then you go for exposure. You you use your reticle to expose this region. Wavelength 248, assuming it's the same thing in, in deep UV system. So you this region and this region will be hardened. You go to the development process. After the CD, you go to the thickness measurement and then you measure the thickness remaining on the exposed area. Now 100 nanometer, just like the original one as given by your, by your contrast curve. Okay, contrast curve, this one is QF. Fraction here, uh, energy here, if you like, then this one is 100 visual, maybe. QF. Okay, so this is where you have complete polymerization of the resist upon exposure to the for negative resist. Done. Right, so it's also called called uh, dose to clear. So dose to clear. <clears throat> Actually, um, and a few more things that you have to do in order to, let me just tell you, a few more things that you have to do if you are the process engineer or equipment engineer doing development of photoresist. Bila you dapat new resist bottle, then you need to evaluate the performance of the resist. So you need to make sure that the dosage is as uh, defined. Usually, kalau kita beli resist, dia akan cakap uh, the minimum dosage for the exposure is blah, blah, blah from supplier and focus range is this much, process latitude is this much. So, um, then uh, engineer in the development, they can what satu curve, we call it focus exposure matrix. This one is extra, extra yang not in the notes, but it's being by Lito engineer. Focus exposure matrix. Or we call it FAM. So what you do, <clears throat> CD will be measured on the, <clears throat> on the Y axis. So CD here, ni, remember? CD ni is the width of metal lines. For example, if this is your, no, not metal lines, not necessarily metal lines. So this is the line that you have printed on your way first, so it's called CD or critical dimension. From the cross section, it's going to look something like that of the resist. And get it up print the cross section. Okay. This is the CD. <clears throat> then um, we will, uh, this one is the focus. Focus in focus dalam scanner. Huh? Scan and focus in micron. Then you will do, uh, you, you will change the dose. Dose of, uh, you will run, uh, it's a bit complicated, let me draw. Okay, this this one is your wafer, for example. Notch there. So, we below you expose the lamp focus exposure matrix, eh? When you expose in uh, focus exposure matrix, so you will actually divide your your wafer to multiple sections. 
the scanner punya recipe lah scanner punya recipe so dia akan detect prefer ni as different sections so each section will be exposed to different for example if you talk about uh, focus on the x axis so uh, if you go along x axis each cell dalam ni dia akan experience different focus uh, in scanner okay so just like what's given on the x axis here so from negative focus to positive focus and center one could be zero focus Okay, so they have like negative focus, zero focus, and then um, along X axis, you're going to expose each section dalam ni with different level of dose. So if, if you go up like this, so it's going to experience different dosage, different dosage, different dosage, different focus, different focus. So as a result, so Bila scanner buat exposure, dia akan go one by one. Dia akan scan, tu, 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 tu. dia akan buat zigzag. It is based on the scanner punya recipe. So you end up having each section experiencing experiencing different focus and different metrics. So that, that's why we call it uh, focus exposure metrics. So you focus and then you expose. So you vary the focus in X axis. You vary the uh, exposure dose, millijoule per square in Y axis. And as a result, you get different CD on the wafer, CD of the resist on the wafer. So then you will plot this. Uh, you'll plot the curve. How does it look like? For example, let me just plot one example. Why it's not so good? Maybe like that. Uh, maybe like that. Example only, okay? Example. Okay? So, ground rule photography, you have, <coughs> you have to understand this. Bila kita guna higher dose for, for, mat, for lines, kalau you print line macam ni, if you go for higher dose, you're going to end up with lower CD, okay? 50 millijoule versus 100 millijoule per cm squared. 100 millijoule is going to produce lower or finer lines or thinner thinner uh, lines on the CD. On the other hand, kalau you print whole, kita dah bincang tu kan, kalau uh, kita pakai dark field and clear field mask tu, if you print whole, kalau you print lubang, the CD is here, the diameter basically, the diameter of the hole. If you increase the dose, the CD will increase. Okay, hole the punya relationship is proportional to the dose and uh, CD of the line is uh, reciprocal to the dose. CD of the hole is proportional to the dose. Okay. So yeah, if you have 50 millijoule per cm squared and 100 millijoule per cm squared for hole, 100 millijoule per cm squared for hole is going to produce a uh, bigger hole, if you like, right? <clears throat> so, katalah dalam F curve ni, focus metric ni, you are plotting on the line only. You tak measure hole. Eh? So like, this one is by the by the layer. So the one layer can either be line or hole that that you printed okay so for example in this case it's a line so the the relationship between dose and cd will be reciprocal so that means on the y axis on the y axis you will get higher cd if you use lower dose or higher dose assuming you are printing lines you will get higher cd if you use lower dose or higher dose uh, in the scanner. Anyone? Uh, lower dose kan? Reciprocal kan? 
reciprocal, right? Reciprocal relationship. So then <clears throat> that means, so CDU high, uh, if you go higher on the CD, so that means maybe you are using for the lowest line here, you are using 20 millijoule per cm squared, for example. Then maybe for the central line, you are using, I don't know, 70 per cm squared. And for the top line, maybe you are using uh, 12 millijoule per cm squared. Right? So that means when you lower the dose, your CD will increase. If you lower the dose, your CD will increase because <coughs> they are, are reciprocal in, in, in nature. Okay? <coughs> Kalau you plot a FAM or focus exposure matrix curve for the whole, then it's going to be proportional. <coughs> Then katalah you dapat focus exposure matrix dalam ni, uh, dalam curve ni. So what we can see, for example, you can see from this curve, the lowest one, you can see uh, the moment you vary your focus from negative focus near to the origin, uh, to the right, uh, towards zero and then towards positive focus, so you, you are actually increase positive can focus there. You can see that <coughs> the punya CD ni actually uh, increases, then plateau, then decreases. For example, example, it may not be uh, true for some races. <coughs> it may be true for some other races. So, katalah you are the process engineer ataupun the development engineer yang uh, develop races ni, kalau you nak pick focus region for the process uh, we've discussed last time about uh, you want to have a like good depth of focus dof for your process which region yang you akan pakai untuk produce the cd okay, let me just divide the region huh? and then we discuss okay kita like biru tu saya divide into three region for example ni ni a bit analytical huh? Ni real job in the in the wafer fair, huh? so it's not in the book. So nak bagi you you dapat some exposure. So I I divide this region into region A, region B, region C. <coughs> Case study ya. Yeah? Who knows? Soalan ni akan appear in the in the test. Case studies, right? So I divide I divide this region into A, B, and C. So if you are the process engineer. Uh, based on this focus exposure matrix at this particular curve, which region you gonna choose to be your process? Go for region A or B or C and Y. Based on what we've learned before. Let, let's discuss, it's okay. You just guess and then we discuss. Katalah you process engineer. <clears throat> Then I give you these regions. Region mana nak pilih untuk jadikan? I remember bila you buat uh, the development process is not yet in the mass production. So the moment process engineer dia, uh, process development engineer they decide on which region to fix, uh, then to stick to, and then uh, dia akan jadikan process specification, and then process spec ni will be implemented in the mass production, and then everyone in the production has to follow the process spec. I mean, before that, you have to decide first which region do you want to use to be the region in your mass production. Right, anyone, any guess? A or B or C? Fazira, what do you think? <clears throat> if you are the lethal uh, development engineer, <clears throat> in ambient region A ke region B ke region C? A C decreasing, CD, uh, against exposure. Zira? Yeah. Ah, what do you think? No. I don't know. Yeah? Input. Not oh, sure. Tak tak berapa clear. Anyone, Ching Wei? 
Maybe C. Okay, maybe C. Okay, why? Any reason for that? While you're typing, Archie, wait, what do you think? A, O, B, O, C. No idea is fine. A, okay, you're going to choose A. Any reason? It's okay. Yep, that's fine. C, Y, Y, C. No idea. Okay, right, that's fine. Uh, <coughs> siapa lagi? Any guess, Nabila? You can fix CD. I think I, I'm going to explain why. But let's just discuss. No problem. B, okay. Nabila says B. Why? You don't know, but you like B. All right. Uh, who else? Come on. Maybe two more. Chazwani. What do you think? B, okay, B again. Why? Any reason, Chazwani? Sure. Um, uh, what was your, what do you think? You can add on to that. Shahira. Come on, one more and I'll explain why. Naim. Naim. POC. I think A or C because of lower CD, okay. So we'll have smaller features, all right, okay. Okay, last one. Sabah, sabah. Ni, what do you think? I'll explain why, then I will relate to what we have learned before. <clears throat> Any last one, last guess, Jenny? Tadada. Okay. Not sure, I guess B, but you don't know why. Okay, right. Um, the answer is B. Okay, why? We think about region A. To region A, the CD is increasing with change of focus. So as you change the focus from negative to towards zero, like so you can see the cd change uh well it can be gradual it can be abrupt depending on the magnitude on the y-axis but you see changes on the y-axis as you change the focus um ah line problem uh, okay you don't know line so uh saya tanya kenapa uh region a or b or c if you are the engineer in charge uh which region you're gonna choose for your mass production process Okay, and the answer is B, and um, I'm explaining now. The, uh, uh, region A, <coughs> the CD changes with focus. So the moment you change change your focus from negative towards zero focus in micron, so you're gonna see some changes on the CD on the y-axis. So you're gonna have that uh, a positive gradient. <coughs> so if you go for region B, <coughs> the CD barely change across a focus. And this is what we want because you want to have uh, a wide uh, depth of focus. So you want to have a wide process latitude or you want to have a wide process window. Okay. So you can say in terms of the <clears throat> wide, kenapa B, wide, wide. Ada banyak banyak uh, terminologi we use in lithography. Wide process window. Wide process latitude. Same thing actually. Wide depth of focus. So what this means is 
<clears throat> bila you vary the focus from say negative something to positive something dekat central region ni eh, the cd barely changes so that means kalau ada slight change in the focus that you don't intend to have in your system but this maybe i don't know focus drift because kalau you join lithography in your intern or in your job later on you're going to see some systems will suffer from from focus drift problem when you scan your focus will drift uh, uh, unknowingly they can drift slowly and this will actually cause some changes in your cd so in order to minimize the you know bad events on the on the quality of the wafers so kalau boleh kita nak ada slight change in the focus bar it doesn't affect the cd at all so bila you punya focus change is quite wide but your cd barely change so that means your process has a very wide process window maknanya kalau ada slight variation pun cd dia sama you don't you don't have anything to worry on the other hand if you go for region a or region c a slight change in the focus in the scanner will cause some change on the cd due to the steep, due, due, due to the positive gradient or negative gradient tak kira lah sama ada dia punya gradient to steep or not uh because it depends on the magnitude and why exists anyway but <clears throat> slight change in the focus will cause some changes on the cd uh, in regions a and c but that is not observed in region b and we call that region to have a wide process window wide process latitude and wide tof so when you do the uh we call focus change what you actually do is you you, you play the punya focus depth lah huh? focus depth bila you expose on the resist you play with the depth on the z and then you see what is the effect on the cd printed on the resist and if you have slight variation in the in the depth of the focus but if you have nothing change on the cd so that is super okay So this is especially crucial if you talk about uh, smaller technology nodes uh, when you can't afford to have any slight change or three nano so where a slight change in focus will cause some change on the cd and your final cd on the resist will be different from what you intended uh, to be okay palm that is it okay is it understood So that's called focus exposure metric. So boleh boleh follow the FEM curve. Adil let me get some source for you online to to be your reference on Elon tapi that's how it looks like the focus exposure matrix. The curve may be different in shape but but the essence or the gist from the from the curve is is what I explained is now. Right? So daripada focus exposure matrix tu uh, engineer akan decide what focus uh, we have to use what energy do we have to use in order to get our desired cd and then we fix uh, the setup the the focus the energy the cd and then we we then uh, pass to the production it goes into the process pack and then kita akan monitor the fluctuation in the mass production right so you can follow the fem Is it okay? Okay, good. Okay, palm, good. Palm. Palm, eh? Right, right. So, all right. Contrast. Um, kita ni kita dah cover contrast. So I'll just skip this. So, effect of resist thickness. So. <coughs> Bila when we spin the resist on planar structure, so you have resist uh, to be to be spun on planar silicon, it's quite straightforward because the distribution will be uniform. It's going to be conformal on planar structure, but we're going to have problem, especially if you have structures down there. For example, kalau you nak ada ada structure kat bawah ni, then you need to spin the resist to cover the whole thing. That is going to be very difficult because it may not cover the whole features well especially at the step step features macam ni eh sebab bila you spin the 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 resist on the wafer it's going to be force centrifugal force uh, sending the resist out right and in fact bila you spin the the resist on the silicon wafer this silicon kalau you spin the resist 
this is the PR for torsos. When you spin due to the force outwards, so you're going to end up with this. This problem, you're going to put the behind yeah, the residue of the resist at the edge of the wafer. And this one is called H bit. H bit. Okay. So we're going to remove bit. Ni. So this one is an unwanted resist, but they are spinning process, right? So it will build up along the circumference. So below you pegang resist, you're going to have, you're going to feel bits um, on the circumference throughout, throughout the whole wafer, right? So what we need to do next is we have to actually remove. So you have to remove this bit. So you have to cut this off, actually. You have to cut this off and then uh, use chemical. Dalam coating juga, dalam coating process, you, you can actually remove this part. Remove this bit. So you're going to end up with just this central part. So this removal is done by a chemical. We call it in a process called EBR. Or H bit removal. H bit removal. So uh, we call it as EBR. So it will just uh, dispense some solution. So on the edge of the wafer where you want to remove the bit, and then uh, the wafer will spin at the same time. So as you spin, it will just cut along the circumference, and the whole bit will be completely removed. And then you're just going to be left with the central resist for processing. Last time we had uh, a couple of issues with this uh, H bit removal problem. So the implication of this is huge. It looks very simple. Uh, they have exposure to the people but anyway. So what, what do we have to worry then? Why? The problem is, uh, below you have a bit the ujung, and the resist is like a polymer yang viscous dan mengeras the ujung because you bake the, the, the resist uh, in the CED process, in the hot plate. So it's going to be left as the bit on, on the edge of the wafer. And then the moment you have your robot arm, comes and picks the wafer for to go to the next module in, in, in the form of this pin set. Bentuk dia U, U shape, if you see on the on the uh, YouTube video yang saya attach dalam e no? So, if it picks the wafer, then the the diameter of the pin set of the robot arm is is fixed and is very accurate. Kalau you had a bit dekat hujung, then it's going to it's going to be it's going to show up as extra diameters, if you like, on the wafer. Then the punya wafer tool may not sit properly on the pin set because it's been calibrated already to follow exactly the diameter of the wafer. So the wafer might end up sitting um, on some angle on the pin set instead of sitting perfectly properly. So if you sit at some angle, then the moment you spin, you move the robot arm at high speed, and the wafer will just fall off and breaks, okay, and breaks. So that is the implication. It looks very simple. It's just a bit anyway. So you don't have any focus. You don't have any active devices, if you like, on the edge. But the handling will be a problem, okay? Because to dia takkan kenal dia punya diameter yang sebenarnya, then dia akan tak duduk properly lah sebab dia ada, dia terlebih besar lah basically the wafer tu. Due to the presence of the bit uh, on the circumference. Right, so let's continue the next one. We're going to finish this uh, remaining slides uh, on Thursday. Then we're going to move on to the next process, uh, which is etching. Right, any questions so far? We're going to look at other issues later on on Thursday. Right, is it okay so far? Can you guys follow lithography so far? Okay. Okay, so far. Right, good. Okay, then, if no questions, then I'll see you uh, on Thursday, inshallah. So, bye bye. Assalamualaikum and take care. Have a nice day. Oh, 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 oh.